Hey, creative souls, word witches, story alchemists, sages, whatever you like to be called. I consider myself all of these things, and I guess I assume that if you're following me, you might fall into one of those categories as well. But I like to be inclusive, not exclusive. I also don't want to assume. So if you have another way you would like to be addressed, let me know in the comments. If you want to know more about why I call myself a word witch, you can check out my video called On Being a Word Witch. I believe I'm on this earth to heal the world through stories, whether it's the ones I write and tell or the ones I help other people write and tell. I'm new here on YouTube and I fully embrace the notion of energetic reciprocity. So if anything I say resonates, helps you in some way, inspires you, please like, share, and subscribe because obviously the more I can grow my channel, the more I can do in my quest to heal the world through story. Because as I always say, stories can heal the world, so let's do it together. All right, today I wanted to talk to you about four metaphors that I use when I teach writing to help keep you writing all throughout this year and beyond. And these really are just kind of mindset tweaks or perspective tweaks, if you want to think of them that way. But I find that they've really helped me. I'm a very visual person. And so when I can think of these, it really helps me satisfy my urge to write and kind of gets me out of my own way. And many of my students have also told me that one or all of these have helped them as well. So here we go. The first one is bees in a jar. So what do I mean by this? I couldn't find a great video of actual bees in a jar, and I guess that's a good thing because putting bees in a jar and putting a lid on them is kind of cruel. And this first image, I think, sort of shows what I'm after, but if you can imagine bees in a jar with a lid on, I'm sure we've all seen this when we were kids, the bees just get kind of frenzied when they are held captive like that, right? And they bounce against the sides of the jar. And to me, that's how I envision ideas in our minds when we don't let them out. They just stay in there, they bump against each other, they smack up against the sides of our brain cavity, and it really doesn't do us any good. In fact, I think it hurts us, it harms our flow, it gets in the way of our flow. And so if we can let those ideas, the bees in our brain, start moving around a little bit more freely, rather than keeping them captive in our minds, they'll slow down a bit and they'll start to move around on their own. And I guarantee you, when you let them have their freedom, get them out of your head onto the page, whether they make sense or not, they will not let you down. Next is clearing the hose. Imagine this is the inside of a garden hose in the spring. It's been left coiled up in a shed, the side of the house, bugs, webs, dirt, all sorts of things have made a home inside there. And imagine that this is your creative brain when you don't satisfy that urge to let your ideas out, to get your words on the page. As soon as we turn on the hose in the spring and let the water start flowing, it eventually becomes this beautiful, nice, clear, fresh water. And that again is what happens with our ideas. So when you're feeling stuck, think about clearing that hose. Think about that clear water just pouring out of there. And that's all you're doing when you're putting words on the page. It's sort of like a brain dump, right? You just let the words flow. You can do it as a free write. You can do it as this other exercise I use where I encourage people to write with their opposing hand. Or you can just take whatever thoughts you have, let them pour out onto the page. When you clear the hose, you then allow for those more clear, clean thoughts to flow so that you can make headway with your writing and so that you can also fall into flow. All right, the next one is throwing the clay. And I've been using this for a while and I've recently realized I've been using the term throwing in terms of clay incorrectly. So apologies to all of you who are ceramicists, pottery makers. I thought that throwing the clay was this getting all that icky, kind of dirty looking, messy clay that really is nothing, it's just a blob. I thought putting that onto the wheel like this, I thought that was the throwing, but I didn't realize that the actual throwing is the shaping of it. So this metaphor still applies though, because you cannot get to the throwing, the shaping of the clay or your words, unless you Put them on the wheel. Unless you take that initial pile of clay, those words in your mind that don't make any sense, that you don't know if they're good or bad, and that you are even trying to quantify whether they're good or bad, the first most important thing is to just get them outside yourself. Start patting them into place 
and then you can start shaping them into some beautiful creation that yourself and everyone else can love and enjoy. All right, the last one is sourdough starter. This is a really favorite one of mine. I saved it for last. I think it may be the most potent, and this is more in terms about why you should write it all. If you don't know what sourdough starter is, this is a jar of a mixture of flour, yeast, and water that grows on your kitchen counter, and it's used to make bread and bread products. It takes some effort, it takes some maintaining, it takes some love and attention. The way sourdough starter works is when it gets to the point where you can extract a portion of it and use it when you mix it with other ingredients to make a new loaf of bread. So you extract from this creation on your counter and you make something new with it. And to me, again, that's what our creative ideas are. Even more, I think it's our life force wanting to move up and out of us. I've talked about this in another video. When we don't tend to sourdough starter, a number of things can happen. It can explode like this. Doesn't look too bad, but I've heard stories, could not find a great picture of it uh, that was legal to use, but I've heard stories of people's sourdough starter exploding and going all over the kitchen. Sourdough starter can also mold and it can die. And I think the same is true of our creative impulses. I think when we don't let them outside of us, they stay inside us and they find other places to live. But I think this affects our mental health and our physical health, our emotional well-being, and even our spiritual health. And this causes behaviors to kind of come out sideways, maybe saying and doing things we don't want to say or do. And in the case of the comparison to sourdough starter that molds and rots and dies, when it's not tended to, I think that also happens to us. And like I said, it finds a home inside us and I believe it can make us sick, make us unwell in many, many ways. Because if, if it doesn't go anywhere, like I said, it will find a corner of us to settle in and just sit there. And energy that doesn't move can become very unhealthy. So those are my metaphors to keep you writing. I hope those help. I hope you think of one or all of them if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like, oh, I don't really need to write today. Or if you sit down at your desk and you feel like, geez, I want to write, but nothing's coming. Think of the hose. Think of the bees in the jar. Think of getting that clay onto the wheel and then throwing it. Get your words out there. Massage them into something. Let them be free. Let them outside yourself. Keep yourself well. And as I always say, I think writing is an act of self-love. And especially when we think of this sourdough starter metaphor. So show yourself some love. Keep your writing practice going. Keep the flow going. Even if you can only write a few minutes every day, even if you only get a paragraph a day, keep it going. It will wear grooves into your brain, into your nervous system. And so every time you think about writing and you sit your butt in the chair, your brain will say, oh, now I know what to do. Trust me, it works. Let me know which one of these works best for you in the comments. I would love to know. All right, as always, sending you mad writing mojo. Happy writing.